Alright guys, what's going on? Linky here, and in today's video we are going to be talking about the new leaks that say Game Boy, Game Boy Color, and Game Boy Advance games are finally going to be coming to the Nintendo Switch online service. Now, these are just rumors and leaks right now, there's nothing official out of Nintendo, but it brings up an interesting question. If we do get GBA on NSO, are we going to see Pokemon games? With that being said, let's jump right into things. Now, before we get into discussing NSO and Game Boy support, I wanted to mention another subscription that you guys can look at. The channel now has memberships. Now, memberships is an extra added thing on the channel. It costs nothing to watch my videos. It costs nothing to engage in this community. But if you want to go to the extra mile and support me, take a look at the join button on desktop or on Android and on iOS. You can go through Safari and go to the desktop version of YouTube. Take a look at those perks. See if anything interests you. There are member badges. There are exclusive polls, exclusive community tab posts and you'll get some videos early so if that interests you and you want to support me and go the extra mile it is always very much appreciated take a look at the membership tab now with nso memberships where will gba fall if game boy games do come to the service are they going to be part of the base model or are they going to be part of the expansion pack everybody say it with me it's very obvious they're going to be part of the expansion pack nintendo wants to make this expansion pack as as salivating of an offer to consumers as humanly possible. They just added something extra to it. The Octo Expansion DLC for Splatoon 2 is now part of the expansion pack, among other DLCs that you can also get through it. And as well as those DLCs, as I've mentioned previously, you get access to the virtual console services. Game Boy is rumored to be coming to that collection. Game Boy, Game Boy Color, Game Boy Advance. There is a massive variety of different titles that could come to the service through this update. Now, the emulator was leaked, seemingly being developed by the Nintendo European devs. Uh, these devs have worked on some other emulators for Nintendo in the past with some of their emulation boxes and other things in the past couple years. So it does make a lot of sense that this would be the team Nintendo would tap for this project. For this video and for this discussion, let's assume that this is real and i i do believe it's real it looks legit and enough people have talked about it and almost verified it with their own sources that it appears to be legit if it is is it coming this year who's to say they've been really weird about how often they've been putting out more content for these services they've been drip feeding games being added to nes and snes for example and as well as to uh sega genesis so who knows how long it'll take them to actually add this, but let's assume it's real and let's assume they do. For the sake of this channel, are they going to add Pokemon games? Are we going to get mainline Pokemon games on Nintendo Switch Online? Look at the thumbnail. Could we see Pokemon Emerald, Ruby, Sapphire, the third generation, Fire Red and Leaf Green, Kanto remakes on the Nintendo Switch? And if they are on the Nintendo Switch, would they also be compatible with Pokemon Home? Take a look at some of the virtual console games on Nintendo 3DS. Red, blue, and yellow, gold, silver, and crystal. You could transfer your Pokemon from those games up into Pokemon Bank and bring them all the way up to the newest generation. You can have some of those Pokemon and Pokemon Home with you right now. I presume a lot of you actually do. I do as well. These were some really cool software features that they added to these games to give it more value and to give more of a reason for players to buy these games again, seemingly even though they've bought them countless times. We've bought Pokemon games from this generation so many times. People play them on emulators, on their computers. People have countless copies for the Game Boy. But how do you incentivize that to get people to pay for it? Again, I think they did a good job with the ability to transfer Pokemon. So if it is on NSO, I would have to expect that you're going to see a Pokemon Home update pushed through that allows you to send your teams up to the main games. Would they do this? Listen, if you're asking me as a consumer, someone who, as I said in a tweet a couple days ago, does not pay for the expansion pack right now. I pay for Nintendo Switch Online every single year because I play a lot of multiplayer games, whether it's Pokemon, Mario Kart, Smash Brothers, all of it. I pay for that service and I think it is valuable and it's a lot cheaper than some of the other online services for Xbox and for PlayStation, even though they might not hold the same value. The expansion pack is significantly more expensive, but if they were to add Generation 3 Pokemon games, especially with connectivity to home, I would have an incredibly hard time saying no to that. I would upgrade to the expansion pack 
in a heartbeat. Now, before we go any further, I just wanted to mention that the vast majority of you guys who are watching these videos and hopefully enjoying them aren't subscribed to the channel. Now, of course, subscribing is free and you can unsubscribe anytime. And if you do subscribe, be sure to turn that notification bell on so you never miss another upload. There's other side games. Pokemon could add to the NSO service as well. You could get things like Pokemon Pinball, Pokemon Mystery Dungeon. Some of the side games that came out during the Game Boy Advance era would, you know, pretty much be a known brain, a no-brainer to put out. It's where it's where it gets complicated is, of course, the mainline games. They are very, very selective in how they re-release these games. The fact that they came to the virtual console on 3DS, even though we never got to Game Boy Advance, was shocking to me. The fact that they opened up content that was previously locked behind events, like the Celebi that you could eventually shiny hunt in the, uh, GB, in the virtual console version of Crystal, was also deeply surprising to me. So maybe they are more willing to add some of these legacy games to this service, especially because it's going to be more difficult to play these games on modern hardware very soon. 3DS eShop is going to be shutting down credit card purchases next year. That means eventually for a lot of people, even if they pick up a 3DS in the next couple of years because the library is still incredibly strong, they're going to have a tough time downloading some of these virtual console games. They It will be very difficult to add funds to your account. It would make a lot of sense, considering the fact that they have these hooked up to bank on 3DS, to bring them on to Nintendo Switch at the very least. Red, blue, yellow, gold, silver, crystal. Having these games cross over would do a lot to get a lot of more old school Nintendo fans, a lot of old school Pokemon fans maybe, to buy into the service, to incentivize that expansion pack more. But the holy grail for me is GBA. It's the set of Pokemon games I've played the least, even though they were my first Pokemon games. First Pokemon game I ever played was Pokemon Emerald on my Game Boy Advance. Eventually, I got Pokemon Leaf Green, and then we moved into the DS era. So this is my childhood. I have so many great memories with these titles, and they would have just an insane level of replay value in my day-to-day -day life if I could boot them up on my Nintendo Switch, play through Pokemon Emerald, fight off the villainous Team Aqua and Team Magma, catch Rayquaza, watch him quell Kyogre and Groudon, and build my team. I love Generation 3. If you've been watching this channel for long enough, you will know that's no secret. So to get these games on NSO would be incredible. And for me personally, as I said previously, it would justify the price of the expansion pack. I think there's plenty of games they could add. They should add them all. If it was up to me and I was done making the decision, you've already made the games. It costs you nothing, I would assume, to, to really port them to the service. And you're going to make your money back from NSO subscriptions because there are going to be plenty of fans who want to play these games on the newest piece of Nintendo hardware. From a business perspective, I just think it makes all the sense in the world. Pokemon is your handheld heavy hitter. It has been that way since the original Game Boy with red and blue. These games are always one of the best selling games on every single handheld console that they come to. Whether it's Game Boy, Game Boy Advance, DS, 3DS, they're always at the top. Giving newer Pokemon fans the ability to experience some of these old games is something that you should absolutely do because for many people it might be their first time playing one of these games maybe they're a younger person who got in with x and y and is now kind of in their teenage years and wants to go back and play some of these older games but sometimes getting them on the original game boy is very difficult putting them on nso would fix a lot of that it's the, one of the best selling nintendo consoles of all time now so many people want to play so many retro games and nintendo is clearly trying to make an effort to incentivize people to upgrade to the expansion pack because i think they realized a couple months in maybe we weren't giving people as much as they felt their their money was worth here they've been adding dlc and other things but they still need to do more so if this emulator is real for game boy advance and game boy games and game boy color games I think Pokemon should be there, and I think I'd give it a 50-50 shot. They're very weird with this sometimes. Sometimes they just completely miss the ball and don't add them, and for a franchise as big as Pokemon, it's never made a ton of sense to me as to why. That's what I think. I think Game Boy Pokemon games should absolutely come to the service, and I think they should be there day one. But what do you guys think? If Pokemon games were added to the NSO expansion pack, would you upgrade if you haven't already? Or do you feel like the price is just not worth it and you have other ways of playing the games already? I would love to know what you guys know and think down below. If you enjoyed the video, please be sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel so you never miss any future content. And as I said before, check out those membership options, see if anything suits you. If you wanna go above and beyond supporting me, it'd be very much appreciated. With that being said, 
I've been Linky. This has been the video, and we'll see you all in the next one. Peace out.